A Russian drone strike damaged grain silos in Ukraine's river port in the Odessa region. The port is on the Danube River and is a vital transit point for grain exports. Ukraine says Russia launched 15 drones that hit three warehouses. Kyiv accused Moscow of deliberately hitting grain infrastructure. These attacks come after Russia pulled out of the Black Sea grain deal last week. Russian authorities accused Ukraine of launching a second drone strike on Moscow on Monday. Moscow's mayor said the drones fell near the capital's central area, shattering the windows and doors of shops. According to the mayor, the drone strike was just 200 meters away from Russia's defense ministry headquarters. Earlier on Monday, two drones allegedly launched from Ukraine hit a Moscow high-rise building. No casualties have been reported in either of the attacks. The navies of China and Russia wrapped up their live-fire military drills in the Sea of Japan on Monday. On the final day of the exercise, warplanes from the two nations also took part. A total of 10 warships and 30 warplanes participated in the drills. The exercise had been codenamed Northern Interaction 2023. North Korea fired two ballistic missiles earlier today. This comes after a second nuclear-capable U.S. submarine docked in South Korea on Monday. North Korea has accused its southern neighbor and the U.S. of increasing nuclear tension. Meanwhile, Seoul lodged a complaint over Pyongyang's missile launch. India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval met China's top diplomat Wang Yi. This was in the South African city of Johannesburg on Monday. The two leaders met on the sidelines of the BRICS summit. During the meeting, Wang told Doval that China and India had the opportunity to work together for each other's development. Doval said that both countries shared common views and interests, but he added that the ongoing border standoff has eroded strategic trust between the two nations. The BRICS summit will conclude on Wednesday. China has removed Qingang from the position of foreign minister. The decision was made at a special session of the National People's Congress Standing Committee. This comes after there were reports that he was having an affair. Qingang had been absent from his position for more than a month. He was last seen on the 25th of June. Israel's parliament passed a part of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's judicial overhaul bill on Monday. The proposal passed after a 64-0 vote. This is because opposition leaders walked out of the parliament in protest. Netanyahu has said he will secure the full consensus of all lawmakers by November this year. The bill aims to limit the powers of Israel's Supreme Court to overrule decisions made by the government. Critics fear this will weaken Israel's democracy by curbing judicial independence. Meanwhile, massive protests erupted in Tel Aviv after Israel's parliament passed the judicial overhaul bill. Demonstrators clashed with police as they blocked a major highway. Security forces used water cannons to disperse the crowd. Police officials arrested at least 22 protesters. Protesters are now demanding a rollback of Netanyahu's controversial judicial overhaul. Thousands took to the streets in Sana'a, the capital of the West Asian nation of Yemen. This comes after a far-right group burned a copy of the Quran in Denmark. This was outside the Iraqi embassy in Denmark's capital, Copenhagen, on Monday. Yemeni demonstrators held copies of the Quran as they denounced the incident. Some even waved swords and assault rifles. Meanwhile, Iraq and Iran have announced protests against Denmark and Sweden over the recent desecration incidents. The United Nations said it had started the removal of oil from a decaying tanker of Yemen's coast in the Red Sea. The delicate operation began earlier today. A special team has been assigned to remove at least one million barrels worth of oil. 
UN officials say that the structural integrity of the oil tanker had significantly deteriorated. They warned that the decaying ship was at the risk of exploding. At least 15 people died after a boat carrying asylum seekers sank off the coast of the West African nation of Senegal. O officials say the incident happened today in the early hours of the day. A large contingent of divers had been deployed to search for survivors. Authorities say the boat capsized because it was overloaded. Spain's maritime service rec rescued 84 migrants off the coast of Gran Canaria Islands. These islands are a part of Spain's Canary Islands. Some migrants were taken to the hospital due to their ill health. One person died before they could be treated by medical professionals. Spain's Canary Islands have become one of the main destinations for asylum seekers trying to reach Europe. The U.S. Justice Department is suing the state of Texas. This is after the U Texas government installed floating barriers on the Rio Grande River. This was done to block asylum seekers coming in from Mexico. In recent weeks, Texas has also installed barbed wire to prevent immigrants from entering the U.S. via the Rio Grande River. The U.S. federal lawsuit seeks to the removal of all structures set up on the river, including the floating barriers. The country's attorney general said that the water barriers were a threat to navigation and public safety. In climate news, wildfires have torched over 20,000 hectares of land in the U.S. state of Washington. Authorities have issued evacuation orders in the region. Several homes, farms and crops have been destroyed by the flames. No injuries have been reported. Greece has deployed firefighting planes to control wildfires on the island of Rhodes. The wildfires there have been burning since Saturday. At least 1,500 tourists have been evacuated. Both inbound and outbound flights to the island have been cancelled. Greek officials say the likelihood of the wildfire spreading further remains high. Wildfires also raged across the North African nation of Algeria. At least 34 people, including 10 soldiers, have been killed due to the flames. The soldiers were helping with evacuations when the tragedy struck. Over 25 others have sustained severe burn injuries. Algeria's interior ministry said that more than 1,500 people have been evacuated. Wildfires forced the closure of Palermo Airport in Italy's northern region of Sicily. Um, <coughs> strong gusts spread the flames around the airport on Tuesday. Uh, firefighters are working to put out the fires. Authorities have said the airport will remain shut till Wednesday. Road and rail traffic have also been disrupted due to the wildfires. In Afghanistan, at least 30 people were killed due to the floods caused by monsoon rains. This was in and around the Kabul province. Over 40 people are missing as hundreds of houses were washed away. Another 70 people sustained injuries. The ruling Taliban have called on aid groups to help with the situation. Four years of drought have led to a severe weather, water shortage in the North African country of Tunisia. Nomads and tribal people in Tunisia are facing a crisis due to this. Low water levels have reduced pasture land and grazing grounds. Tribal communities are unable to secure water and food for their families and cattle. They have urged Tunisia's government to provide support. Climate activist Greta Thunberg was charged by a Swedish court on Monday. Thunberg and other climate activists were found guilty of disobeying police orders during a protest. The activist group was charged for blocking road access to an oil terminal in the Swedish city of Malmo. Thunberg was fined $240. After her conviction, Thunberg said she was disappointed with Sweden's legal system. Now on to business and tech news. Apple is facing a $1 billion class action lawsuit in Britain. It has been brought by more than 1,500 application developers in the UK over App Store fees. 
Apple services business has, been, has seen revenues grow at a rapid pace in the last few years. However, the company charges 15 to 30% commission from app makers for the use of an in-app payment system. This has been criticized by application developers. Apple earlier said that 85% of the developers on the app on the App Store do not pay any commission. A jury in the US state of Texas has said that Google violated a software developer's patent rights without uh, its, with its remote streaming technology. Google has been ordered to pay more than $338 million in damages. The jury found that Google's Chromecast and other devices infringe upon patents owned by TouchStream Technologies. Google, however, says that it has developed the technology independently. Binance and its CEO, Changpeng Zhao, are planning to seek the dismissal of a U.S. Commodities Futures Trading Commission complaint. It accuses the crypto exchange of violating the country's Commodity Exchange Act and other federal regulations. The CFTC sued Binance in March this year for operating a quote-unquote illegal exchange and a sham compliance program. The lawyers for crypto exchange FTX's founder Sam Bankman-Fried have rejected U.S. prosecutors' claims of witness tampering. However, the lawyers have agreed to accept a gag order. Bankman-Fried has pleaded not guilty to charges that he stole customer funds. He's set to go on trial on October 2nd. FTX was once valued at $32 billion, but it filed for bankruptcy in November last year. Taiwanese chipmaker TSMC has planned to invest more than $2 billion in an advanced facility. The decision is driven by a surge in demand for artificial intelligence. Taiwan's Tonglu Science Park has officially approved TSMC's application to lease land for the new facility. Switzerland-based Logitech has raised its sales outlook for the first half of the 2024 financial year. The company now expects first-half sales of $1.875 billion to $1.975 billion. The earlier projection was $1.8 billion to $1.9 billion. Elon Musk has replaced Twitter's logo from the uh, famous Bluebird to X on Monday. Martin Grasser, one of the three designers of the Bluebird, said it, was, he was, it is sad to see the replacement of the original logo. The logo has been changed amid a major rebranding of the social media platform. Remember, Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion last year. Commercial and consumer bank First Source Core said that it suffered a security breach. The breach has impacted 450,000 customer records. The security breach reportedly involved a popular file transfer tool called MoveIt. A third party has gained access to the data of First Source's commercial and individual clients. The company is in the process of identifying and notifying the clients affected. Italian asset manager Azimut has said that it faced a cyber attack, but the attack reportedly did not harm sensitive customer data. The Israeli hacking monitor startup Darkfeed said that the attack was carried out by Black Cat. Black Cat is a ransomware group which uh, stole, earlier stole a lar large amounts of data from an Italian state-owned energy services firm in September. Starbucks has been found to have violated US labor laws by firing a Manhattan store supervisor. The supervisor had organized workers to join a union. The National Labor Relations Board judge found it, quote-unquote, particularly suspicious that Starbucks would risk violating the law by discharging an excellent employee. Starbucks says it disagreed with the observation and is exploring legal options. Moving to sports, in cricket, India won the Test Series against the West Indies 1-0 after the second match ended in a draw. The game was abandoned on the final day due to heavy rainfall at the venue. India was off to a good start on day four with a 365 run target for the West Indies. 
On the same day, India had set a new record for the scoring the fastest ever 100 in Test cricket. The Indian women's uh, cricket team captain Harman Preet Kaur might get banned for two matches. This is because of her on-field outburst during the one-day international match against Bangladesh. The match was played on Saturday. Kaur hit the stumps with her bat after an umpire ruled her out. She also passed remarks about the standards of umpiring after the match ended. She will be the first woman cricketer to be found guilty of a level 2 breach of the International Cricket Council Code of Conduct. In football, newcomers Philippines beat co-hosts New Zealand 1-0 in the FIFA Women's World Cup. Forward Serena Bolden scored the only goal in the game with a header. This is the first World Cup match victory for the Philippines. They lost their opening match to Switzerland on Friday. With the win, the Philippines have managed to keep their hopes alive in the tournament. Brazil's Eri Borges achieved a new feat during her match in the FIFA Women's Football World Cup. The 22-year-old winger scored a hat-trick in the match against Panama. With this achievement, Ari Borges became the first ever Brazilian to score a hat-trick in a World Cup debut. This is a feat even legendary footballers like Pele or Ronaldinho did not achieve. Spanish football club Real Madrid defeated AC Milan 3-2 in a pre-season friendly match in California. AC Milan began with a good start after securing a two-goal lead in the game in the 25th minute. Real Madrid scored all their three goals in the second half to secure the victory. Vinicius Jr. scored the last goal for Real Madrid in the 84th minute. Saudi football club Al Hilal have made a record offer worth more than worth $333 million for the Paris Saint-Germain forward Kylian Mbappe. This comes after PSG didn't select Mbappe for their pre-season tour of Japan. Mbappe's contract with PSG expires after a year and he has refused to extend his term with the club. Uh, before this, Neymar's signing to PSG from Barcelona in 2017 is, uh, the, is currently the world's highest record amount. Meanwhile, PSG have granted permission to Mbappe to speak to Al-Hilal after the Saudi side made the record-breaking offer. However, Al-Hilal is not the only club who has approached PSG for the Frenchman. PSG believe that Mbappe plans to join Real Madrid for free after his contract expires in 2024. Meanwhile, other major clubs like Chelsea, Manchester United, Inter Milan and Barcelona are also keen on signing Mbappe. U.S. football club Inter Miami's coach has said Lionel Messi will be the club's new captain. Messi signed for Miami earlier this month and wore the captain's armband on his debut match for the club. The club's previous captain is currently injured. In tennis, world number two Novak Djokovic said he will not play in the Canadian Masters in Toronto due to fatigue. The 36-year-old Serbian lost Wimbledon to Spain's world number one Carlos Alcaraz a week ago. Djokovic, who has won the Canadian Masters four times, promised to return next year. US-born basketball player Kyle Anderson will play for China in next month's FIBA World Cup after obtaining a Chinese nationality. The 29-year-old forward from New York became the first basketball player to obtain Chinese citizenship through naturalization. The Chinese Basketball Association announced the news, which was later confirmed by Anderson himself. The citizenship will allow Anderson to represent China at the Olympic Games in Paris next year. Now to the world of entertainment. Barbenheimer saw sold-out record-breaking screenings in the UK. Barbie stole the show with an estimated $23 million earning. Oppenheimer, on the other hand, made $14 million. Barbie director Greta Gerwig has broken the record for the biggest film opening directed by a woman. Oppenheimer director Christopher Nolan secured his biggest, uh, second biggest opening weekend in the UK.
Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer is facing one controversy after another. In the latest, moviegoers have spotted an error in the film. They pointed out that one of the scenes when a crowd was cheering for Oppenheimer, they were seen carrying American flags with 50 stars. Now this particular scene was set in 1945 and 50 stars were incorporated into the American flag in the year 1959. This was under President Dwight Eisenhower. Uh, the Barbie movie's casting directors have revealed the names of actors who had to turn down the roles of Ken. Some of the actors who almost made it to Barbie Land were Saturday Night Live star Bo and Yang and Schitt's Creek's Dan Levy. Uh, casting directors also revealed that they would not have taken no for an answer from actor Ryan Gosling for the role of Ken. Mattel CEO uh, Wynon uh, Kreese has opened up about how he really feels about the Barbie movie. In an interview, uh, Kreese says that the movie was a milestone moment for Mattel and uh, his, a historical moment for cinema. He also praised actor Margot Robbie, who played the role of a stereotypical Barbie in the movie. The movie aims to address both good and bad aspects of the doll, which is the product of Mattel. The movie takes a dig at Mattel for how they marketed Barbie. K-pop band BTS's member Jungkook's song 7 is on number one on the Billboard Top 100 song chart. Jungkook has become the second member of the boy band BTS with a song in the Hot 100 list. BTS member Jimin's song Like Crazy released in April and was at number one as well. The song 7 features American rapper Lotto. This is the first time she landed in the Hot 100 number one. Pop band The 1975 is cancelling its shows in Indonesia and Taiwan. This comes after its performance was cut short in Malaysia. This happened when guitarist Matty Healy commented on the country's anti-LGBTQ plus laws. Healy also kissed his male bandmate on stage in Kuala Lumpur. The next day, the event organizer announced that the rest of the three-day fest had been cancelled. American comedian Pete Davidson will face community service time over rec a reckless dr driving case. He has been charged with one misdemeanor count of reckless driving. Davidson will have to complete 50 hours of community service. He was involved in a single vehicle crash in a Beverly Hills neighborhood on March 4th. American comedian, comedian uh, Tiffany Haydish has revealed that she recently experienced her eighth miscarriage. Haydish said she kept her miscarriages private as she didn't want people to treat her like a quote-unquote wounded animal. The comedian took parenting classes this year so she could adopt a child. Actor Kevin Spacey is awaiting a verdict in his sexual assault trial. The jury consists of nine men and three women. The judge sent the jury to begin the deliberations on the case. 63-year-old Spacey is facing nine charges over sexual offences against four men that allegedly took place between 2004 and 2013 in Britain. Spacey has pleaded not guilty to all the charges. Forensic ex experts will test bullets found at the home of a former gangster to see if they're linked to uh, the the death of the late rapper Tupac Shakur. Police revealed that detectives removed several .40 caliber bullets from the gangster's residence. Detectives have preserved uh, forensic evidence from Tupac's death scene, which includes bullets and clothing. The rapper was killed 26 years ago.